Guys, we're out at Pulley Ridge with Gulf Coast Offshore. We're catching Almaco Jack, Tuna, Scamp Groupers, Yellow Eye, Snapper, Queen Snapper, Yellow Edge. Look at Chris right there. Look, Chris is hooked up right there. Good one. We've got Chris Doyle with us. We've got Zane, Jason, Mr. Aaron Lewis, Tim, and Dan. We're taking you guys with us. Stick around. timing of this trip was wrong in the sense that I had a million things going on, but so right for the reason that I desperately needed a break. I got a text from my friend Aaron saying let's go fishing. He booked a charter to Pulley Ridge with Gulf Coast Offshore and Aaron and Jason offered to put us up for the night at their ranch in Sarasota. It's the one that's actually on the fence post. Oh, oh, there we go. This was our first time to the ranch, and honestly, this place is an outdoorsman's paradise. This common area came with all the mounts when they bought the place, and guys, there's literally a giraffe mount. This dude is like a big like, game hunter, like all over the world. Uh, looks that way. Look at the porcupine. Dibs on the big bed. We're probably gonna get about four hours of sleep just because it's 8.30 now. We gotta be up at 12.30. We've got about an hour and a half drive. So not much sleep tonight. Get in the beanbag chairs tomorrow morning and sleep on the way out to Pulley Ridge. But it was a pretty cool night because we're hanging at just this killer ranch in Sarasota. And you know, these guys are just treating us fantastic. They just fed us um, some chicken on the grill and sweet potatoes and salad. So. We're pretty stoked about the whole situation, but right now we need to lay down and just get a little bit of shut eye because tomorrow is going to be a marathon. Did you see me? Oh, well, hello, Did Christopher. You? I was on the outside. I was looking. <laughs> oh, no. It's 12.30 in the morning. Got zero sleep. And I'm convinced that fishing is stupid. So here's the deal. We had an hour and a half drive to the dock and all that's left is to load up our gear and food for the day. It's a pretty sweet location being that it's a short intercoastal ride before you reach the Gulf. I can only imagine how many fish have met their demise on this Freeman. And I think I speak for all of us in saying I'd like to add to that tally today. There was a lot of moving parts to put this whole thing together and I am just super grateful it's all about to go down. Four and a half hour ride guys. Four and a half hour ride out. We are on a 42 foot Freeman. We've got four 350s on the back. We're gonna fly, but we still got four and a half hours sitting beanbag chairs. <laughs>
This guy can flip. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Yeah. 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 yeah you're good. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Morning one of a three-day trip, and we're tight. No, this isn't a three-day. No, 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 three-day trip. <laughs> This is a one day we're on Pulley Ridge. Ridge. We've never done this before. Very exciting. We've always kind of thought about running out here fast. We're doing 40 knots all the way out. Freeman, 42. Gulf Coast offshore. Captain Tim, Captain Dan. We're sending four, about 400 feet. Pulley Ridge, four hour ride out. Christopher Doyle's getting close to having some color there. Of the delicious varieties. First fish. All right. Nice work. Old Faithful. It gets hot in a hurry as soon as you start jigging. Chris just got tight twice on an all glow torpedo I was fishing the one drop so I'm gonna switch it out you got one yellow eye second fish came off so I'm not gonna waste any time I'm just gonna go ahead and snap over because it seems like they're kind of keying into uh, the all glow color unfortunately I only have a 300 gram so I'm hoping that I can tap bottom What's up, baby? Chris was hooking up on the all glow and has just lost two all glow torpedoes. As soon as I switch to the all glow torpedo, something chews. But it doesn't feel like a big fish, but being that Chris just pulled up a yellow eye snapper, kind of makes me think that it's possibly a yellow eye. Something interesting, so we're in four, about 400 feet. And I'm putting down 300, but we're basically dropping on the port side and the jig is going way out port side and then making its way back to starboard side. So it's almost like there's like a top current out here moving the jigs one way or the other. We should be seeing color on this little guy pretty soon here. My buddy caught an almost record one out here, 17 pounds. I think the record's like 18 pounds. I did get the record. Did you? It's on electric though, so it didn't count. Yes, sir. Pretty small. 20, 27 pounds. 27? What? Are you serious? What? What? Did you catch that? So, Cap just said he caught a 27 pound yellow eye snapper out here. So, that's a yellow eye. Yep. Take a look at him. That's uh, Mr. Yellow Eye. And he's not sticking his tongue out at you. No, that's, that's, uh, his stomach. that's his stomach coming out because uh, the pressure coming up. I reeled him up relatively quickly, but uh, I can Absolutely, can't... probably the best eating snappers out there. Oh, 100%. Absolutely phenomenal. That's the average size. They do get a lot bigger. Sometimes we get some smaller ones, but um, a lot of people get them mixed up with vermilion snapper, sometimes red snapper, but you don't really see them in fish markets too much. Which is good. Interesting. Really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. knows about it. <laughs> Here, bait wise. There we go. That's a little bear. Hooked up, baby. <laughs> Woo! Hey, no, you're going the wrong way, dude. <laughs> oh, he is smoking. Is he giving me the tuna shakes? We tight, boys. This one just took an interesting run on me. Definitely uh, wasn't happy about his situation, whatever was going on down there. He probably ripped a good 25 yards off, but it was quick too. It was coming off quick. He peeled him 
decent amount of line off of the spool. I feel like he got eight by something, but I don't know. He should be getting close. He's kind of coming up like a grouper now, or, or a fish that's missing his tail. Tuna! Blackfin, baby! Yep. Tuna fish! In the world, I thought I felt that tuna tail shake. Beautiful, you ready? All right. That's a pretty ferocious hookup. Dude. He was angry when he, he ate that. Yeah. He was down deep too. He was down deep. Man, look at that! Look at that! Look at that fish. Pretty little football. Let's see if we can get him in that sun. You know, Jake, that you love, you're gonna be using. You gotta get a bunch of them so you always have them on deck. You never know when Johnny Jigs will have a shortage, which we're working curiously hard to avoid ever doing. The all glow torpedoes caught us by surprise this year because they did incredibly well in many different fisheries and continue to do so. I think I got another yellow eye. Not a ton of pressure, kind of just a, a violent slap. Mild bouncy pressure, feels like a smaller snapper, three, four pounds. But I love being surprised. Oh, is that that's some brown? What is that? Oh, Snag beeliner? Beeliner. Big beeliner. Mingo. Big beeliner. What do they call those in uh... Mingo. Mingos in the panhandle. I don't understand that. Why ne they, neither, neither do they. No, we, we ask. No, I don't even know we where We ask questions. I don't even know where beer liner came from. No, ne yeah. Neither do I. Sweet. Our million staff. They eat great. Well, we're doubled up on the bait. We got Jason on this side. Let's see if you can see Zane over there on the other side. The current is ripping out here. As soon as we put the jig down, it was scoped out. So these guys were able to tap bottom with a, a pretty heavy lead. And you can see Jason is working very hard over here. Very hard. Oh, oh. Snowy! Snowy, baby. That's a little, yeah. What are you slapping at? F***ing <laughs> dink ass f***ing fish. You look good on the GoPro. <laughs> what do you catch that on? A pacifier? What do you think? <laughs> That's an Almaco. Is it an Almaco? That's a big Almaco, bro. That is a huge Almaco. Holy s***. <laughs> That's a big Almaco. <laughs> Holy crap. Full grown AJ size. Keeper AJ size. The thing about that's an Almaco jack, guys. That is huge. That is a monster. And I'll just show you the dorsal so you can tell. That is a, can you believe that's an Almaco? Look how dark the color is on them. Is I so we're starting to drift on the port side of the boat, ending up on the starboard side. So my line is scoped just yeah, I don't know, 15 degrees to the south. So I can feel the fish waving. You know, almost like a flag or a kite. You know, it's getting like a pop of wind, but it's a pop of current against his body. Tug feels better which is nice but it, it still could just be a, a smaller snapper with the current playing tricks on me nice, nice top. top oh is that blue line yep yes sir cool yeah he didn't look that big coming up all right blue line tile gray tile whatever you want to tile him delicious Boy, that guy hit hard, and he kind of slowed down. Woke up again. This is amazing. Gosh. I love it whenever you figure out what jig they're keying into right away, and then just give it to them, you know? So, if you put your tip right next to the tip of the rod, you, of the guy you're trying to pass, 
legs. You can usually see whether you need to go under or over. And that is a big help whenever you're moving down the rail, especially across a bunch of other roads on like a head boat scenario. But this guy continues to be a little feisty, which makes me believe it's not a grouper, but possibly a, uh, another tile. And there's the possibility of queens too. But you never know until they come off. I have guessed wrong a million times. Good ass. And if you guys don't know, we almost forgot to introduce Mr. Devin Butterfield over here on the camera for us. You can see him. Formerly Butterman. Known to us as Butters. Butter, Butter shots. Butterfake. Coming up now. Little bounces. How's it bouncing? Little bounces. I see color. We got deep color. Oh, I got one on the meat machine. Oh, this is there. Pretty cool. Gotcha. Blue line. Oh. Just another delicious fish. Absolutely. Even because of the little party balloon. <laughs> party balloon. Captain Tim did not disappoint. Snow, snow, Every snow. drop was producing quality fish. We were setting a drift fishing for 30 to 45 minutes and then just resetting again. <laughs> he just closed. I love her. His teammate, Brendan Parker. Mid drop. Lost my lever. He pitched right over top of me. Who does that? Yeah, to give you ample room in a positive direction for me. Oh. Most of our range was between four and 600 feet. And Chris and I literally went fish for fish all morning long. This is our time to relax and enjoy. We take our fishing serious, but we're never serious on the water, if that makes any sense. When you're surrounded by nature, all of your thoughts tend to be right where your feet are at and nothing else. Uh, so there's a bunch of birds flying over and it looks like a school of uh, tuna possibly. So we're just kind of scaling down our gear to some lighter jigs, something that we can rip through the water fast. They like fast moving action. So we're all just kind of quickly getting ready here. Hoping we could stay with them. Uh, so we're still in that really bad current. I saw those tunas working and uh, they're working way north and the current's going south. So it's like you're just fighting each other, trying to stay with them. Uh, they had, well, I had them underneath us for a second. As soon as they got down, they were gone. So we're probably just going to keep chugging along and stop chasing them because if we keep chasing them, we're just going to waste time. Maybe get one. Uh, you just like tap the boat the whole time, like make sure that our lines aren't going off direction or another if they are kind of counter oh, counter yeah. maneuver the boat I and just kind of try to help us stay straight up and down okay. and those lines were kind of doing this and i think once we get here if you pump that it'll straighten us down if we drop two people to start let me see which way they're moving i can adjust the boat and everyone can either go on one side or you know one or the other Just hooked up, boys. Jason came off. Well, guys, we made a move in hopes to get out of this current. Um, pretty nasty current today, but we ended up just kind of right back in it. And it's not terrible for us on the Atlantic side. Um, two, two knots, feet over ground. It's not really terrible. We're kind of used to it, but. Oh no! Oh. 
send them back down. Now you can't keep scamp outside of 120 feet. It's called the 20 fathom closure. Red grouper, scamp grouper are closed outside of 120 feet. So Heart he's gonna go back. Heartbreak, guys. Absolute heartbreak. That fish right there comes up pre-buttered. It's probably one of the most delicious, delicious fish in the ocean. So to catch one and then have to send them back down is definitely not uh, what we want to do. But you know what? There's more fish down there. I'm gonna drop a jig and see if we can't get one that we can put in the ice box. up baby that's a little bigger whatever he is just because we're in scamps I'm gonna take it kind of slow going under the boat just a little bit what ooh he just got a little feisty I think I gotta I think I gotta come around you tight I see like a snapper a little bit. I'm getting mixed uh, snapper grouper vibes. So good, so good, but this guy's gotta go back down. Sad day, sad day for the whole team. Rocking the space deep, dusted it off, polished it up. I haven't used my electric much this year. 80 feet. Another scamp. Still a little guy. So there's his jig going down, and there's the fish that came up for it, went down for it, and then he grabbed it, and then and there's the fish coming up right there. <laughs> around, coming around. Please don't be another scam grouper. I've never said that before in my life. Ever. Aaron, come toss up here with us. Yeah, come on, man. You could be floating off. Oh, it's a tile. Okay. Well, sometimes these tiles, when they come off. Oh, careful. Look at that, guys. Blue line tile fish. Delicious to eat. Going in the cooler. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's angry. Oh. You will not be going back into your home today, my friend. <laughs> he was digging for that bottom. We're gradually getting deeper. We started this trip off in about 400, and now we're over 500 feet. And bites definitely uh, on on this spot. They're chewing. Yeah. Cool. He's feisty. I'm wiggling my butt. I'm waggling my tail. Yeah, we're here. Little queen. Oh, it's a princess. Wiener. 
should be getting color here soon, guys. Aaron just caught a scamp grouper. Chris caught a queen snapper. So it's a, it's a real mixed bag here. This same drift, we got blue line tile, vermilion snapper, lots of different species on this spot. I should be getting color here soon. Oh, yellow edge boys! Woo! Yes, sir! That's it, baby! Oh, bro, I'm doing a picture with that guy. Guys, to me, man, this this is right up there with Scamp Grouper eating wise. And the good part is that he's he's a decent size. He's enough for all of us to share on the boat. But I am fired up to have a yellow edge grouper. This reel is a very interesting machine where it stops. The motor goes goes down to slower when they're trying to pull drag. It's kind of cool. I would have to say that the electric reel is helping me pull it to the surface, but I'm old. This is this is my saving grace to be able to do this for lots more years to come. Thirty-five yards, hundred feet. No color yet. That was a long soak, what we call a long soak of the jig. Cap is bumping us to stay vertical. John said total mixed bag is coming over the rail. Ooh. Tuckage. Feels like a good, good fish. Nice. It's rewarding because it's like your jig's down there for a while. Granted, I've got the seaborg on, but you know, you're like, oh, I'd rather not. So much easier to reel it up with a fish on than just your jig. Right, John? Yep. <laughs> Leave it down there hoping to grab a scrap or something. Sometimes I've seen some epic fish caught. Yeah, scoped out, jig's been down there a while. This is a game of persistence. This is a game of just sportsmanship. It's a lot of fun. Things are dialed down, so the fish, they feel a lot more active. You feel just every movement, every tail wag, every head shake, even when they're small. It makes it a lot of fun. That's why we love jigging. My jig, and I've got teeth marks, and I'm missing my assist hook on the bottom. Something, something swimming around with a hook in its mouth right now. Here we go. I think Chris is about to get collar. Slide him right over here. Beautiful. There is the balloon. Did I get a balloon? You got a well, almost. He he sucked it back in. He's blowing bubbles. You be careful grabbing these. These things have an evil thing inside of their gill plate right in here. And if you hold inside their gill plate when they shake, they'll cut you. They also got these evil ones, and then this guy, that little guy right there. It gets you really good. Safe way to hold. I would fish Pulley Ridge every day of the week if it was that easy. This place is hard to reach and most people won't travel this far. I believe that's what makes it so good. Less pressure equals more fish. It's that simple. Nice. Snowy. Snowy. Hey. Hey. Little Yankee whoosh. By noontime, we we're all getting Let's tight. Stop, we caught over 10 different species of fish in all of the delicious variety. We always say nice around the JJ line, shop, finally. these deep water fish come up pre-chilled, pre-buttered, and ready to serve. Ooh. Little guy, I think I probably a bee liner, and I'm ripping them up relatively quickly. I think we're gonna possibly make a short move. Cap said our drift is really good, like we're going uh, in the right direction that we wanna go to stay on the fish and we're, you know, hitting his axes on the screen. So that's good. We may set this drift again, I would imagine. But Chris has got something behind us. Princess, the lady in red.
Yeah, you know, I. Well, that's what we're looking for. It's pretty sharp here. Six hundred. Go, 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 go! Hooked up, hooked up! Dan was tossing out a flat line with a dead bait and it got absolutely smoked. He passed the rod off and Zane started hammering down on what seemed to be a really nice fish. Okay. Keep it tight, keep it tight. Judging by the run and what it ate, probably a really nice wahoo or kingfish. Let's be real, sometimes you could do everything right oh. and the fish just win. That's fishing, my friends. Just. I've lost my fish. Uh, I had a fish. Take it back and it busted right off. No way. On the way up. He doesn't even know he's hooked it. Dude, he's not vibrating like a tuna. And he's not fighting like a king or... So sometimes we'll get him on the electric reels on the bottom and they'll shoot straight to the surface. But he's not swimming up. He's not doing nothing. No. Dead weight. Huh. Freaking bizarre, man. Yeah. Oh, it's a tuna. Tuna? Yeah. He didn't even fight. Oh, I let him out. Hooked up, baby. Thanks, Dan. Nice fish. Fast enough. There's not enough drag. Look, I got a hand for the Damn! Damn. Shoot him! Oh, he oh. Oh, oh, nice. yeah, dude. Come on. I let you guys catch some fish for a while. I mean, I gotta start fishing. <laughs> That's a drag puller. Got a drag puller. 80 feet. I got some. What are these movements I'm getting? Look at my rod tip. Uh, you, might, you might have a hook on the back of it. Is it a jack? Yep, let me come on the other side. Ow. It's an albacore. Al 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 Still cool, but... Yeah. Not what I thought. Oh, one's got a big old Clean, baby! Just got picked up on the uh, on the drop about 400 feet down. Got some vibrations, so I think I got greased by a blacksmith.
tremendous. He's back. Let me get this guy. Oh, I just pulled him again. Stick him, stick him, stick him. Oh my god, he's on. This doesn't make sense. You gotta kill him. I, I saw you, bro. I'm you pulling the hook, bro. I'm pulling the damn hook. This fish, <laughs> dude. We have had three hookups, three fish. Come up. There we go. <laughs> Well guys, we're at our last drop for the day. The guys in the back are trying to put down a Warsaw bait. So it'll be kind of the icing on the cake of an absolutely excellent day. We have caught just a ton of fish. There were, I don't think I reeled up my jig more than twice without a fish on the other end of it. And just being out here kind of reminds me of like, you know, what got me into offshore fishing and I do remember my uncle Stevie, you know, taking me to the pier, taking me to the bridges and the keys, and then eventually taking me on long range trips and tying my leaders and tying this and untangling that for me and teaching me this. And, you know, I was a mess as a kid, but he had a ton of patience with me, teaching me, you know, what he knew about offshore fishing. And he is an awesome offshore fisherman himself. But so leave it. you guys, you know what? Who's who's that guy in your life? A lot of you, it's your father, or you got an uncle. There's, there's got to be somebody who got you into this. But I'm kind of curious. No, but it'll create some action. You know, you got an electric reel in your hand. Right? <laughs> no, dude, what a freaking day out here. Yellow ice groupers, scam groupers galore, snowy groupers, yellow eye snapper, hand bone snapper. It has been just incredible, man. Just to experience pulley rage on a center console is just, what a trip of a lifetime, man. So I'm getting some heavy tail thumps, kind of like a big grouper. And uh, he hit it hard. I hit him hard back. He was trying to dig down, just trying to rock me up, really. Chris just pulled in a big blue line, and I had a few bites on this spot, and I missed them. So this guy, I, I yeah. set that hook pretty hard. So as long as it's in a proper place, I think he's coming up. But so we've got about 170 feet to go. It's kind of a nice thing about these electric reels is, you know what depth, you're at, you know, you can read the screen. The screen's gonna tell you what depth you're at and then you can, you know, start reading the reel and know whenever you're close to the bottom, how far off the bottom you are. Come on, bait boys! Yes, sir! Woo! Yellow and grouper, boy! All right, you need to go under. So like I was saying, that guy who got you into fishing, 
but I would say like there probably wouldn't be a Johnny Jigs if I didn't have my uncle Stevie taking me out and being patient with me on the water. So leave a comment down below who's your uh, who's that person that got you out on the water fishing and or hunting or anything outdoors. But guys, what a beautiful yellow edge grouper. I love just that bright it looks almost like a, like a highlighter. <laughs> there it says yellow. <laughs> He's been busting my chops all day. This guy right here. But all, all day. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> the game of the game. This thing's this thing uh is absolutely delicious um, deep water species. Um, it's right up there with a uh, scamp grouper. You can see how his scales are kind of popping up there, and his eyeballs are popping out. A lot of people ask me why do the eyeballs pop out and the scales. This is from barrow trauma actually. So whenever you bring the fish up um, too fast, he kind of expands with, I believe it's nitrogen inside of his body. Um, they can survive this if you have like a descending tool, you have to, um, or a venting tool. A lot of guys have to have a descending tool now, but unfortunately this guy's not gonna survive it because he's going in the cooler and home with us. What an epic adventure. We left the dock at dark and we arrived back in the dark. Blue line tile, yellow edge grouper, snowy grouper, and yellow eye snapper topped off the ice box. Captain Tim and Dan cut the fish while we loaded our gear and then it was back to the ranch to get some much needed shut eye. Jason hooked it up with a killer breakfast the next morning, showed us the ranch. We said our quick goodbyes. You inside? Oh, and then it was back to Pompano. All right, we made it back home from a 24 hour marathon day trip out to Pulley Ridge. Again, it was Gulf Coast Offshore with Captain Dan and Captain Tim, Johnny, myself, and also Aaron Lewis, which was pretty cool. Jason and Zane. Thank you guys for inviting us. How about being tight all day long? All day long. I feel like I only reeled up my jig maybe three or four times without yeah. a fish on the other end of it. I lost four, two cutoffs, two stuck on bottom. I couldn't get off. Hands down, up on the list of trips. That was fantastic. So what we're doing here, guys, is this is the aftermath. This is the fruits of our labor. We're vacuum sealing. So we have two vacuum sealers. This is probably the most cost-effective way to vacuum seal your fish. This is just a Ziploc vacuum sealer from Walmart. You could also buy the little bags right there. So generally what Chris and I do is I'll start off by just cutting the bags and sealing them to length. And then Chris will cut the fish to the right size, slide them into the bag, and then hit the sealer right here. If you guys want to see real quick what that looks like. I got one loaded up, vacuum and seal, bang. And then I start loading my next batch. And the finished product looks like sealed and goes right into the fridge. Passed out to some of these fellas to enjoy tonight. Well, that's a wrap, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and we're putting a few TikToks out there. And most importantly, big on it.